before the show. Well, why not? Well, it'll throw off his performance. Oh, look, we've only got five minutes. Is he nervous? Oh, I've never seen him look more up for a show. He never felt better. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. A wild and crazy guy. An Aspen Film Society production. Oh boy, late arrival. Gosh, this is starting to go over. I like this. Wow, look at this audience. Aw, oh, there's my mom and dad. I always did take after my mom. And look at that guy. Doesn't he realize they don't allow smoking in here? I'm not into that one-night thing. I think a person should get to know someone and even be in love with them before you use and degrade them. Gosh, look at her. <laughs> I'd sure like to get her in the sack. So, uh, you want to get in the sack? <laughs> Come on, just get in the sack. Come on, what difference does it make? I spent all that money on dinner. I thought for sure you are going to get in the sack. Now, come on, just get in the sack. Oh, just a little bit. Just a little ways then. No, that fooling around is not for me. I learned my lesson. Officer, that's him. That's the man. Oh, wait a minute. Now, wait, I, I've never been to Duluth. I don't know this woman. I mean, what makes you think that baby's mine? You Ray? Yeah. Hi, I'm Steve. I'm the guy who called. Right, yeah. I'm in town just for the day. I need a car real fast and uh, saw your ad. How much, uh, how much you asking for it? Uh, 1800 Starting at 18 Yeah, starting. How come you're selling it? Oh, I'm moving to Paris. Yeah. Just sit here, I guess, right? Yeah. Well, it looks pretty good. Got good rubber on it. It's like new. Yeah. It's nice chrome. You don't see chrome like that around L.A. much. Nah. You know you got a dent here? Yeah, it's from a parking lot. Yeah, that lowers the value. So you're asking 18, it's got a dent, you know? I'll go 1,600. Okay. See, I don't make the rules, you know? Because they had one downtown just like this. They're asking 18, but no dent. So that's the way it goes. How's the hood? It's original. Got a good hood on it. Okay. Ray. Ray, Ray, Ray. Let me ask you a question. How's the radio? It's good. It's a good radio? Okay, I think we got a deal. I know. You want to be like me. A love God. Well, you have come to the right place. Because I am very much like me. In fact, I am so much like me, many people have mistaken me for me. <laughs> But let's talk about the women. I like to work fast. I give myself 60 seconds. Because after 60 seconds, my accent runs out. And I talk like this. But I'm OK for now. I've spent much time learning about the women. In fact, 
I have spent so much time learning about the women, I have neglected to learn many of the basic things of life, like how to put my arms through my coat sleeves, or how to eat with a fork. I do not know what a shoelace is. I cannot read or write. I do not know basic hygiene or how to work a pencil. But I do know women. Women are what I know best. Pardon me, miss. Can you direct me to the nearest discotheque? NBC presents a new series, Famous Door Slams. Hey, Mr. Boone, I came to pick up Debbie for the prom. And action. Hey, tell Ms. Steinem that lover boy is here. And if the chick's not down here in 30 seconds, I'm gonna split. Hi, did you call a doctor? And action, Steve. Hi, have you been having trouble growing things out of your nose? Well... And action. Hi, can I come in? for a doctor. And cut it. Afternoon, man. Afternoon, Six feet. Feet. Well, we got some green hands and we got some able. All right, boys. We're going to do it fair and square, just like always. Hey. Hey, partner. What are your names? Hey, cowboy, I said, what are your name? Martin. Well, you better listen up, Martin, because we're drawn for Bronx. You call these flea bags Bronx? I've ridden to church on tougher turtles than these. Well, we'll just maybe see about that turtle boy. All right. Uh, Johnson, you'll be aboard. Hurricane. Jones, you'll be on the Widowmaker. And Martin. <laughs> you'll be aboard Pokey. <laughs> That's one turtle you won't be riding to church, Martin. A turtle's a turtle. There ain't one that can't be rid. Ain't nobody ever stayed on Pokey. That's him over there, ain't it? The one with the fire in his eyes. What are you doing here, Paula? Thought you said the life with a turtle boy was not for you. I realize now. Turtles are in your blood. And I want you to know I'm going to be cheering you on every time you squat down on a shell. Turtle boy couldn't ask for a better woman than you. Steve, would you wear something of mine for good luck? Sure. What do you got, a little pin or something? <laughs> Oh, oh. Oh, 
<laughs> that looks mean. That is the pokey, I know. Hey, Martin, good luck. <laughs> Hey, this guy is good. I'm giving up the rodeo. Steve, you mean it? You're never gonna go back? Yeah. I've heard the best, and now my turtle punching days are over. Oh, Steve. Hey, Martin. New turtle puncher in from the Bahamas says he's got a turtle nobody can ride. I say that you can. No, thanks, Irv. Me and this little lady are going to settle down. She's got some plans for me, and, and I aim to abide by them. What are you going to do? I'm going to become a rag picker out behind the supermarket. That's what you want me to do? That's the way you want it. That's the way I want it. That's the way you want it. That's the way I want it. <laughs> way he wants it. <laughs> That's the way I want it, Eric. <laughs> That's the way you want it. <laughs> That's the way I want it. The way he wants it. <laughs> That's the way I want it. So long, Eric. Remember me, huh? So long. Crazy guy. Why, crazy guy. I'm, I'm Steve Martin. See this dump? Someday it's going to be a park. Unless we do something to save it. Dumps like this are disappearing all over America. What are you going to say to your little boy when he comes up to you and says, Daddy, can we go to the dump? We can't, son. They've turned it into a forest. Oh, but Daddy, can't we go play with the rats and vermin? No, son. All they have there now are little bunnies and woodchucks. Hi, I'm Steve Martin. <clears throat> I'd like to talk to you tonight about a serious problem that has reached shocking proportions. I'm talking about parental abuse. We're going to show you now some black and white films that were taken by our hidden cameras. Roll them, please. Here, we see the unsuspecting father returning home after a hard day's work, only to be brutally assaulted by his four-year-old son, who has been made rabid by eating sugary breakfast cereals. Hi, I'm Steve Martin. What you are about to see may shock you. I'm standing in front of one of Southern California's most notorious beaches. Yes, it's one of those kinds of beaches, the kind you've probably read about in your hometown newspaper. If you're ready, let's take a look. As you can see, these people are totally clothed. And what's more, they're not ashamed. They feel that this is the way Mother Nature intended it to be. You might say it's their thing. To them, it's as natural and American as having pumpkin pie on Halloween, turkey at Thanksgiving, or eating apple meat on whale day. Hi, I'm Steve Martin. See this? It's money. Money tossed from passing cars by inconsiderate motorists. How much more effort would it have been to take this money and toss it into the garbage can where it belongs? Money litter is everybody's problem. Many people forget that this stuff can be used as fuel to heat our homes. My dolly is stuffed with money. My little Timmy built a raft with it. So you see, 
Millions of Americans are helping every day to clean up. Hey, buddy, take a lesson from the bluebird. My hair is gray, my coat is tan, my pants are black. If you're not seeing these colors, there's nothing wrong with your TV set. You're just watching the Steve Martin special, a wild and crazy guy. When people see me on the street, one of the questions they always ask me is, are you really a wild and crazy guy? Well, the answer is yes, on stage, but not in my private life. Oh, sometimes it's good to get away and relax and not be the crazy guy that you see on TV. You see, here at my home in Radiation Valley, I, I like to be not Steve Martin, the comedian. Here, I'm just, oh, Emperor Rudolph, <laughs> direct descendant of Hermes, King, Lord, ruler of Fluffy, the noble Fluffy, ha, 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 king of the Ottoman Empire, the, the Roman Empire, and the Empire State Building, ha, ha, some more granola, my liege, ha, granola improves his reading scores, so remember, on stage, a wild and crazy guy, but off stage, just a regular guy like you, you're not cold, are you, Fluffy, because I hate chili dogs, <laughs> well, let's hear you try and be funny. Tennis court is now in session. Tennis court. True case histories taken from the files of the United States Lawn Tennis Association. Mr. Boswell, you are accused of not bringing your racket back high enough on your backhand. See, I think what you want is a more relaxed stroke, kind of an easy thing like this, with just a, just a very straightforward motion, ending high. Let me, let me show you this. You want to plant your feet. Planting the feet is very, very important. Now, just very firmly, now bring the racket back, and it's just a gliding motion with the racket ending high, so you want to think hips. Not wrist. You don't don't you the... feel that the grip is the important thing here? The grip is important, yes, but but not on clay courts. Your Honor, without a good forehand, the backhand has lost its potential. Uh, yes, you need an aggressive stance and you must charge the ball. Your Honor, may I remind the court that in 1753, Captain Rice set sail for Antigua with a mutinous crew. He never reached his destination. That's irrelevant. All right, Mr. Boswell, how do you plead? Guilty. I throw myself on the mercy of the court. I'll accept any decision. Okay. Death. But Your Honor, isn't that a little steep? You said you'd accept any decision. Now you have to live with it. Anyone for tennis? One, two, three, four. Push him to the left. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Push him to the right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Stand up. That was great. <laughs> that was really great. Hi, girls. Hey, it's me, Steve Martin, the comedian. Lots of smiles and make sure that your spacing is right. Nobody moves Look at Hey. The jump, make sure that you're going to the right first, then to the left. Great. He always stay pointed. I have it the ones together. Once together, the knees stay together and point it the right time. Lots of energy, okay? Okay. Uh -huh. Lots of energy for the audience. I spread out. Pom -pom wow. Yeah. Spread out pom -pom. I, right here. Okay. I must be okay. invisible. Gosh. Think of all the things I can do. Why, why I can fight crime. I can be the world's greatest spy for my country. I can generally help mankind in, in so many ways. Look, you see, you don't understand. You see, I'm invisible. And I was going to...
Do you have the ticket for the car? Yes, that's right. They have ballet parking here. You mean ballet parking? No, darling. Ballet parking. Steve Martin, professional ski instructor. Many of you may know me as a semi-professional comedian. Well, I was actually born in Austria. My real name is Gern Blanston. And I've been asked to give a few pointers here that you might be able to use the next time you go skiing. What you want to remember, as you're skiing down, is that you plant the poles like this. It's a downward motion. So you have the action going all the time. You want to see this kind of pumping action on the hill. And as you're making the turn, you want to see this kind of motion. And that's, that's the thing. Now, let me put this all together for you. So you might want to take a couple of notes on this. So you... Now, what you want is a certain amount of freedom so the hips are always in a motion like this, kind of like a rowing thing. You see many people skiing down the mountain like this. They're into the rowing position. Now, what you want also is that looseness to be able to drop at any time and be able to get this position as you're going through the mountain and over the moguls. Now let me try and put this all together for you into one swift motion, the beauty of skiing. That's basically what you want on the downhill motion from the top of the hill. Never litter the mountain. Always pick up your skis when you go home. I'll tell you, there's nothing more exciting to women than when they see a professional skier come off the mountain. See, it's possible in some of the Colorado Rockies to ski right into your living room. Ah, home safe and sound. Okay, kids, let's check our equipment. Compass? Good. Ice cube trays? Good. Typewriter ribbon? Good. Bowling balls? Good. Okay, now, over here is the forest primeval. Over here, civilization. This way, the unknown. Out here, home and security. Here, bears and trees. Over here, blenders and toasters. So here we go, into the forest! Whoa! We're lost! We're lost! I know we're lost! We're going to die! Oh, I know we're going to die! Oh, you, you've had a life, but that's me! I have so much to do! Oh, no! Why me? We're going to die! Now, if you kids want to eat tonight, you've got to be very, very quiet. And just stick with Steve. There's one in the bushes over there. We got it, kids. You're with Steve. It's 
a big one, too. Look at it. Oh, we eat tonight. This is fun, isn't it, kids? Sitting outdoors, roasting a watermelon over an open fire, making our own sweet and sour lettuce borscht. It's the Steve Martin Variety Show, starring Steve Martin. Hey, let's take time out right now and kind of get to know each other. Let's take questions from the audience. If anybody has any question at all they'd like to ask me, please raise your hand, feel free. I'll be happy to answer anything, anybody at all. Uh, yes, this lady right here. Uh, Steve, uh, how do you relax after the show? Well, what business is that of yours? <laughs> any other questions? Just raise them up. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Steve, how did you get started in show business? Ugh. Where, where are these people from? I mean, what is this? What's going on here? People think they ask me anything? I mean, this is, this is the kind of stupidity that drives me crazy when someone stands up and asks me a question like that. I mean, I have a right to a private life. I'm sorry. I'm not required to answer these questions. Anyone else? Uh, yes, you, sir. Uh, Steve, uh, do you enjoy working in television? This is the kind of thing that disgusts me right here when someone stands up and brings a question like that out to me in front of us. Get, get this guy out of here. It makes me sick. It's sick to my stomach. Get him out. Any other questions at all from the audience, please? No more questions. Okay, let's go on with the show. Well, I've got to go. Why, Bark? Bark? Did I bark? That's your name, Bark. <laughs> What's well, Bark? Bark? <laughs> Not Bark. She calls me Bark. You believe this? Bark? Do I do, do I bark? Do I look like a bark? Look at this. Wait a second. Look at this. Bark, right? Look at this. Bark? You see bark on there? Bark? Oh, Bart, please don't go. I must go. Well, before you go, can I ask you one little question? Sure, honey boonch. How much does a comedian make, really? Well, if I'm doing the Tonight Show, you get, like, scale, but you can make yeah. records and things. Our very, very special guest, Johnny Cash! Thank you, Steve. Remember when we worked together last? I sure do. It was in Nashville. I did your four summer specials down there. We had a lot of fun, didn't we? We sure did. Well, I guess the question on everyone's lips is, how is your research coming along on the neutron stars? Not well, Steve. I'm still not sure whether black holes in outer space are pulsating subatomic particles or merely an atomic structure absorbing everything into their own singularity. Well, Johnny, a lot of the country stars have a long way to go before they catch up with your work in astronomy. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a lot of us are very aware of your important advances in mouse taxidermy. Thank you. Johnny, I know you're going to get a big kick out of our next guest, Muhammad Ali. Really? One of my all-time favorite people. That's right. Let's not waste any more time. Ladies and gentlemen, the heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Ali! <laughs> Muhammad, meet Johnny Cash, first of all. Johnny, meet Muhammad. Not only are you one of the most famous boxers in the world, but you're also probably one of the most famous human beings in the world. When you're at airports and at restaurants, are you recognized a lot? Uh, no, never. Well, that's great. Ladies and gentlemen, Muhammad Ali, Johnny Cash, let's give him a big hand. Be sure to tune in next week. Our special guest will be $16,000 in cash. We're just going to set it up right here. We'll see you next week. Thanks a lot for coming by. Good night. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten. Whoa. Oh, no, I've spilled water all over the stage. Oh, God.
drop. Wow. Gosh, this is going over great. I guess it'll just go on like this forever. Steve? Steve Martin. Where? Is that you? It is. Oh, Steve, what are you doing? Steady in. Steve, where'd you get that wine? At the wine auction. The wine auction? Oh, I used to have your own wine collection. 10,000 bottles. What happened? I drank it. Well, that mean you drank six bottles a day for five years. No, I didn't. I drank 50 bottles a day for a month. Oh, Steve, what happened? You were on top. I was? Sure, you had cars, money, houses, everything. Did it change me? Well, it sure looks like it has. For the better? Oh, Steve. What about all your girlfriends? Well, I got rid of them. They didn't live up to my standards. Oh, Steve, you better pull yourself together. You've got a big movie offer. I do? A movie offer? What's the movie offer? Steve, you're going to star in your own film. I am? Wow! This is what I've been waiting for! Look out, world! Here I come! That's it. That's my first television special. We kidded around a little bit. We had a little fun, but mainly I want to thank you for inviting me into your living room. Pardon me? These people did not invite me into their living rooms? Well, I know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. And I was wondering if you'd invite me into your living room? Uh, my living room is uh, being... The carpet's being cleaned right now. Oh. Hello. Hi, I'm Steve Martin, the comedian. Steve? Yeah. I'm Ranch Howard, also a comedian. I was wondering if you'd invite me into your living room. No? <laughs> oh. Hello. Hi. I'm Steve Martin, the comedian. Yeah. And I was wondering if you'd invite me into your living room. Well, I would, but um, I'm in the process of getting ready to move, and oh. I just don't have anything in in the living room to invite you in. Oh. So, you guys want to be comedians, eh? Well, you've come to the right place because I know comedy. Stick with me and you'll make it. But you must listen to everything I say. Okay, Laurel, you go with Costello. <laughs> 